Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to export an orthographic sitemap from Google Earth Pro and import it to scale in Rhino. So to do this tutorial you're going to need to download Google Earth Pro from the website and I'll just put the link into the notes. It's a free download. Once it's all loaded up you can open up Google Earth and I have already navigated to the site that I want to work in here but I'll just show you that there's a couple ways to navigate within uh, Google Earth Pro. One is to just pan with the mouse and to zoom or zoom in and out as you like. The other would be um, to enter your destination into the search panel here. So I'm going to put New Brighton Park and press search and that will zoom you right into the destination that you have. So I'm not actually using New Brighton Park, I'm just using this uh, refinery area that's nearby to the park. So I will close that search and turn that label off. Um, before we get started with exporting images, I just want to make a note that you should ensure that there's nothing checked in my places and also make sure there's nothing checked within this primary database. So if you have any items checked, and I think usually when you open Google Earth Pro, there's a bunch of things that are already checked, just make sure they are unchecked and you can close that off. Um, you can also navigate between having this, this sidebar on and off by going to view sidebar. I'm going to keep it out of the way because we don't really need it for anything else. In tools and options, I want you to double check that this universal transverse mercator uh, Latin long is turned on. Um, and then also make sure that we are in meters and kilometers for our units of measurement. I'm going to just click apply and OK. So to ensure that you're capturing a one kilometer by one kilometer site, one thing that you can do is use the measure tool here just to get a rough idea of how big a kilometer is. So I'm going to make sure that this um, is set to kilometers. And then using the box on my mouse, I'm just going to take a distance here until I get to one kilometer. So that's approximately how big one kilometer is. So now I have a, a good idea of where I need to zoom into on my map to see um, a full sort of box area of this one kilometer by one kilometer site. Um, so you can just clear that away and close this out. I would suggest that you create a polygon and call it site one kilometer. You can rename it to whatever site um, you're using. And then go into measurements. Make sure that your perimeter is set to kilometers and your area is set to square kilometers. And then roughly draw about a one kilometer shape. Sorry. While you're still in this box, roughly draw a one kilometer shape. So I'm gonna set these points you can see the measurement here so if you need to change it you can just drag these little spots okay Okay, once you have your box set, um, just press OK. And if you uh, want to get rid of this box, it's going to save it as a little place. So you can go to sidebar and you see that it's, um, I've made like quite a few mistakes here, but yeah, um, it's gonna save it with the name that you gave it. So if you ever wanna navigate back to it, you can just double click on it and Google Earth will zoom you in right there. If you're like me and you screwed up a bunch of times, you can just right click and go delete on the old ones. And there you go. All right, you see that Google Earth 
uh, navigated to this in it's kind of an aerial view. So first of all, let's just uncheck this so that it's it's not there anymore. And if you want to get back to um, orthogonal plan view, you can go to reset tilt and compass right here. And that's going to make sure that you're oriented north and that you're looking straight down. So I'll turn off my sidebar again. And you may or may not see these options here. If you don't see them, just go to file and then save and go save image that will that should navigate between uh, having that panel on and off so again if you don't see it just go to save image and those options should pop up um, so with the understanding that my one kilometer box uh, will fit probably within a zoom about like this I'm going to reset my tilt and compass again make sure I'm orthogonal and then I'm just going to look at the map options. So you, there's a bunch of options here that you're not seeing. Um, so there's a, a title and description, which is right here, and you can always edit that. There's a legend here that would be if you had markers that you needed to use. And then the compass and the scale bar are all down here in the lower right corner. The only things that we really need to keep are the scale and the compass. So that's those are the options I'm going to keep checked off. And then you have a few options for the background map. You can have the full color map, the reduced color map, or the totally desaturated map. I think that for my purposes, I would keep the color map just because it's going to make it easier to differentiate between different materials and areas while you're drafting. So check the resolution. Uh, you're probably going to have yours set to one of the default resolutions, which is down here. Um, but I would go with the maximum resolution that's going to make sure you get the best quality file. And then just double checking again that you have your compass straight. Uh, you can save this image as a file. So I've already saved this a few times because I um, did this tutorial twice before I did it right. And I'm just going to save over this file here. Okay, now that you have your orthogonal plan, um, we are going to open up Rhino. I'm going to be working in the top viewport and I'm going to double click on this label to expand the viewport so that it takes up the full width of our window. And now the first thing we should do is check the units. You can do that by typing in units. This is already in millimeters, but we want it to be in meters because that was the units that we had our map in. So click meters and then OK. Now to import your file, you're going to use the command picture frame. This allows you to navigate and select a file to put in the background. So I'm going to select the image that I saved, which is here. And then it doesn't matter where you place it. You can just select a point anywhere in this window because we're going to scale it according to the scale bar right away. So you can click the top edge to close off the command. And now if we scroll down into this bar, we see that this says this line is 100 meters long. So um, that's going to help us because we're going to resize this map so that it is properly scaled. So to do that, we can select the map and then press SC for scale. Press enter. It's going to ask you to set a base point. So we will set the base point at the corner of this scale bar right here. Then it wants a scale factor or first reference point. Our reference point is going to be this scale bar itself. So to select the other edge, just press shift while you're drawing the line and it will make constrain your line so that it is orthogonal. Click the edge of the corner here. And now it's asking for a second reference point. And all we need to do is put in 100, press enter. And that sets that little line that we drew as our scale reference, it sets it to 100 meters. So now if we measure this line using the distance command, we can click in the corner here and here, and it should be 100 meters. So we've scaled it properly, which means our map is now to scale. 
And all I'm going to do now is um, move this to the origin. So use the M command, M for move. And if you don't have any snap points that show up as you're looking to get this edge, just go down here and make sure that your end snap point is turned on. If it's not, you can just turn it on. Then you're going to click on it. And instead of trying to manually find the origin, you can just type in zero comma zero. That's gonna bring you to the very origin of this, of this plane. So now we have our map, it's scaled properly, it's oriented in plan, and you're able to begin working with it. Now just one last thing before we finish this tutorial, how do we draw a one kilometer box to sort of outline our site? We're going to use the rectangle command. You set a base point somewhere um, at the corner approximately where you want to begin the site, and then it says other corner or length, and I'm just going to put in 1,000 because we're working in meters. Then it will say width, so 1,000. And then you can see now that we have a perfectly square one kilometer by one kilometer box. And if you want to move it around, there's two ways to do that. Um, you might see this little tool come up. This is called the gumball. If you don't see it on yours, look down here and make sure that gumball is activated. The gumball allows you to move an object orthogonally in the x, y, and z direction. Since we're in plan view, we have the option to move in y or x. So you can use the gumball to arrange this uh, according to where you want your site boundaries to be. And the other way to move this object is to use the move command. You select the object, Press M for move, and then using the snap points, you can move this object around anywhere that you want. So um, you can move it freely in space, you can change it over here. I'm gonna move mine back to where it was before because I'm pretty happy with that. And that's how you can outline your site using Google Earth Pro and Rhino.